In this lecture, we are going to talk about different kinds of compactness. So we have seen one definition of compactness, which is using the uh, compactness using the open cover definition using open covers and in this uh, lecture we will see uh, uh, different kinds of um, uh, other notions of co uh, compactness one is called limit point compactness this is um, using the concept of limit points of infinite sets and the third one is called sequential compactness and this has to do with convergence convergence of sequences And uh, we will um, also give examples to show that um, none of them are equivalent to each other in, in general for general topological spaces. But uh, the uh, theorem that we are going to show is that uh, all these three, all the three uh, uh, notions of compactness that I wrote above A are equivalent for metric spaces equivalent for metric spaces so um, let us begin with uh, uh, the first thing that we are going to talk about is limit point compactness so let us define what is a limit point compact space so this is limit point compact space and uh, uh, topological space x is called limit point compact so limit limit point compact if every infinite subset of x infinite subset of x has a limit point so when um, every infinite subset of x has a limit point we call the space limit point compact and the first theorem uh, that we want to show Theorem uh, 3.1 is that a compact space is a limit point compact, meaning that a space which is compact with the open cover definition is also. Uh, a limit point compact uh, so it has uh, every subset of it has a limit point so first let us see a proof of this theorem so to prove this uh, we begin with the compact space x so let x be compact and let a be an uh, a b so let me write it as normal a so let a be an infinite subset of x and uh, we, we have to show that a has a limit point a has a limit point so this will show that x is limit point compact now uh, we argue by contradiction again so suppose that suppose that a has no limit points then this means that um, uh, a contains all its limit points vacuously contains all its 
limit points and this statement is vacuously true since uh, a has no limit points and uh, this is the same as saying that um, a is a closed set a is a closed set so remember that um, the set of limit points a prime set of limit points Uh, satisfied the following uh, description so a closure is the union of a with the set of limit points so if a prime is included in a so if a prime is included in a then a closure is a subset of a and this means that a is closed a is closed so um, if, a, if a set contains all its limit points then it is closed and here it contains um, uh, a has no limit point so a contains all its limit limit uh, all its limit points so vacuously and therefore a is a closed set and this means that um, a complement is an open set so um, so open set in x so we keep this open set now um, for any point A in this infinite set A, uh, we can always find since um, A uh, is not a limit point, which is to say that A uh, does not belong to the closure of the set A minus the singleton set A. Uh, this means that um, this means that there exists an open neighborhood, open a neighborhood, which I denote U A of A, such that U uh, A uh, intersects A at precisely this uh, singleton set A. Uh, this is because if every no if every neighborhood um, of A intersects A in a point other than A, then it will be in the closure of A minus A closure uh, the singleton set A. So since um, this is not true, so we can find an open neighborhood U A such that the intersection is precisely the singleton set A. And now the open cover. A given by the collection of all these open sets U A and a complement this covers X because well um, A is a U is a uh, contained inside actually it is equal to actually this is equal to this uh, union over U A and uh, the rest uh, the rest part of x is covered by a complement so uh, this collection covers x and since x is compact there exists a uh, finite subcover subcover uh, let's call this u a1 u a2 u a n um, union a complement of x now um, this means that well a is disjoint from a complement this means that a is the finite union of these u a i's uh, however this means that a is finite this implies that a is just the uh, collection of points a1 a2 a n because uh, u a intersects a exactly at the singleton set a so um, a must be this finite collection of points u a i uh, a i where u a i is the finite subcover that um, that covers a however this contradicts this this is a contradiction contradiction since a 
uh, was an, is an infinite set. So this proves uh, the fact that compactness implies limit point compactness. Now the converse of this, uh, let me remark that uh, the converse does not hold in general. And um, well, we have already uh, mentioned that um, compactness and limit point compactness are equivalent for metric spaces, but uh, usually limit point compact does not imply compact uh, in general. So uh, one of the standard examples for this is to take x. So take x as the Cartesian product of the natural numbers with a two-point set, let's call it 0, 1. And uh, this set is given the indiscrete topology, which means that the only uh, uh, tau indiscrete, the only uh, open sets are the empty set and the set itself. So, uh, and of course, x is given the product topology. So, I claim for this space that first uh, claim is that x is not compact. So, it is not compact in the open cover definition. And secondly, x is limit point compact. So, we see here at an example where uh, limit point compactness does not imply compactness. And so for the first one, um, the to show that x is not compact, take the open cover, take the open cover uh, un. This is the collection of sets of the form n cross 0, 1. So because um, here uh, n is given the discrete topology, of course, this is with the discrete topology. So each um, each point n, each singleton set is open. So therefore, this is open, and it it is an open cover of X, but it has no finite subcover. Has no finite subcover. You can easily say this because if it had a finite subcover, then it will only so the uh, any finite subcollection u k k equal to 1 to let's say capital N this is nothing but the union union of the singleton sets uh, k k equal to 1 to N and uh, cross this Cartesian product so um, this can never this is always a proper subset of n cross 0, 1. So, um, it, this uh, open cover has no finite subcover, therefore, x is not compact. And now we can show the second part that x is a limit point compact. And to prove this, we will actually show uh, something stronger, which is that every non-empty subset A of X has a limit point. So, um, not just infinite subsets, but every non-empty subset has a limit point. And uh, this has to do with the in indiscrete topology that we put on the uh, second uh, coordinate. And to show this, uh, take take any point, take any point um, A in A. So A is of the form N i, where N belongs to the natural numbers and i belongs to the two-point set. And I will show that uh, if uh, i equal to 0, then the point n1 is a limit point of a 
and similarly if i equal to 1 then uh, the point n0 is a limit point so let me just prove the first one because the second one is similar so suppose that suppose that a is of the form n comma 0 and then i claim that um, so to show that n comma 1 is a limit point of a so this is equivalent to saying that um, every neighborhood neighborhood of of this set uh, of this point n1 uh, intersects a intersects a um, at a point different from at a point uh, uh, other than x other than this point other than n and this point n comma 1 so why is this true well um, all neighborhoods uh, let me go to new page so let if a u is a neighborhood of n comma 1 then uh, a u must contain uh, u must contain uh, the point n comma 0 and this is because the open set the, uh, the let me call bn which is the basis set containing this point uh, n comma 1 of the form n cross 0 1 is the smallest open set smallest open set containing well smallest uh, yeah smallest open set containing this point n comma 1 and um, this of course uh, and so uh, n comma 0 belongs to bn and bn is always a um, a subset of the neighborhood um, u that we have chosen for n comma 1 so um, this means that every neighborhood uh, this means that uh, every neighborhood a u of n comma 1 intersects a since we have chosen our point n comma 0 to be in a and of course these two points are different so um, this means that um, n comma 1 is a limit point and it, in fact it lies in the set of limit points of the set a so uh, we see that x is limit point compact uh, but we have already seen that it is not compact so now that we uh, have seen what is limit point compactness now it is time to define what is sequential compactness and for this we need a couple of new terminologies so the first notion we will need to define what is sequential compactness is that of a subsequence so we have seen what is a sequence and a subsequence is defined similarly so uh, suppose that uh, x is a topological space topological space and and let xn and in n be a sequence in x and uh, if we choose if we choose an increasing strictly increasing strictly increasing sequence sequence of natural numbers so we have uh, n1 the first natural number less than n2 the second one is strictly higher similarly the third one is strictly higher and so on 
So this is an infinite sequence of uh, natural numbers which is strictly increasing. And uh, then the sequence in x defined as so y k is defined to be x of n k. So here uh, we have we are choosing choosing the the kth mm, uh, element in the sequence will be the n kth element in the uh, given sequence x n. So this is called uh, so this is for all k in n is called a sub sequence of x n. So what we are doing is so we have a suppose we have this sequence of points x1 we have um, x2 x3 etc let's say this is xn1 this is xn2 and so on and um, so this is the original sequence but when you are defining the sequence yk you are only choosing the points which are which appear in the uh, indexes uh, for the strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers that we have chosen so uh, the first one is y1 which is x uh, n1 so for example if if n1 is 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 5 then y1 is x5 if n1 equals 5 and similarly uh, you can have y2 uh, equals um, x100 if n2 equals 100 and so on so this this uh, note that this sequence uh, of increasing sequence of natural numbers is completely arbitrary so you can have as as long a gap between uh, between any two points in the subsequence as you want and uh, so this is called a subsequence and what is a sequentially compact space so we can define a sequentially compact space as a, a topological space space x in which every sequence every sequence has a convergent subsequence convergent subsequence and you might have already seen in this kind of property in um, in calculus or analysis now the uh, first theorem that we want to show about sequential compactness is that if x is a metric space if x is a metric space then limit point compactness implies sequential compactness and uh, we will use the uh, sequence lemma for uh, the proof of this theorem so let us see a proof so suppose that we choose xd a uh, metric space and um, let xn be a sequence in x sequence in x now um, we take the uh, set of values uh, of this sequence so let a be the set of points xn such that n in n so um, so this is a subset of x and so if first of all if a is finite so we have to show that um, it has a convergent subsequence and we know that x is limit point compact and we have to show that it has a convergent subsequence uh, and this sequence that we chose has a convergent sex subsequence now if a is finite then um, so um, in this case say a is equal to the set of points a1 a2 a n and this implies because we have infinitely uh, many um, x n's but only finitely many values this means that there exists a, a k in this set 1 2 up to n says that uh, x n equals a k for infinitely many infinitely many 
n in n so this is just a, some kind of pigeon, pigeonhole principle that you might have seen uh, we have infinitely many values of xn but only finitely many points uh, that it can take so there will be at least one such index k for which uh, xn is uh, xn takes the value a k infinitely op often so um, in this case in this case uh, this sequence xn has a constant subsequence namely uh, y um, and k equals uh, let me write y and i equals a this a k where n i is uh, a, a is a natural number says that x n i is equal to a k and we have seen that there are infinitely many so you can choose an increasing sequence for the subsequence property and and then you can simply assign y and i to be a k and this is a constant subsequence this implies that y and i converges to a k and so we have found a subsequence which is convergent so for, note that for this purpose we did not even use the limit point compactness and uh, so uh, for this uh, case it is trivial that there is a convergent subsequence on the other hand if a is infinite if a is infinite then we can use the use the limit point compactness limit point compactness uh, property to uh, conclude that there exists some point x belong to the set of limit points of a and uh, now this means that x belongs to the closure of a and now we can uh, use the sequence lemma uh, so by the sequence lemma note that since we have chosen x uh, to be a metric space since x is a metric space then this implies that there exists a, a sequence let's call this a y k of points in uh, in a such that y k converges to x on the other hand uh, a sequence since a is already the set of uh, values of the sequence a sequence in a is nothing but a subsequence so but a sequence in a which is the set of values of this uh, original sequence that we xn that we took is nothing but a subsequence subsequence of xn and therefore uh, there exists a convergent subsequence of xn so uh, we have shown that um, if a uh, in a metric space uh, if you have a limit point compactness then it implies sequential compactness and we will uh, see some other implications in the next lecture